Everyone loves a good sleeper. Sometimes it's a love see. Sometimes it's a pull-out couch. Sometimes it's a 15th round quarterback slash tight end slash receiver slash running back. Today, I want to talk about five fantasy football sleepers. Let's go. So to be classified as a sleeper, I'm going to be talking about players drafted in the double digit rounds. These are the players you really need to do your research on. And if you grab them at value, it can give you an advantage in your fantasy football lineups. But first, let's talk about Caleb Williams. Everyone loves CJ Stroud this year, including me. I have him as a top five quarterback. And for a lot of reasons, he's gonna give you a little rush and not much, but he has crazy weapons on all parts of the field. Three really good receivers, a really good tight end, a really good running back. Am I talking about CJ Stroud or am I talking about Caleb Williams? I'm talking about both. The difference is with CJ Stroud, you're going to have to draft him in the early round, sometimes fourth, fifth round. Caleb Williams is the discount CJ Stroud and you can get him in the 10th round. We also need to talk about the division that he plays in and the other three offenses that he's going to play against multiple times a year. Detroit, top five offense. The Packers, possibly a top five offense. And the Vikings, I mean, they have Justin Jefferson. Let's just go with that. We've seen what CJ Stroud does. We've seen, you know, the Andrew Lux, the Robert Griffins of their time. Nowadays, Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud, you know, these guys are coming in and playing at a high level from the jump. And I think Caleb Williams, with the pedigree that he has, the talent and the weapons around him, is going to do just that. He's being drafted as a quarterback 15 and in most cases, undrafted in most leagues. Again, if you punt the quarterback position, Caleb Williams is, is not only a value, but a sleeper who can easily be a quarterback one his rookie season. In the 11th round, I want to talk about a starting running back. Yes, in the 11th round, I want to talk about a starting running back, Shuba Hubbard. He's literally an RB1 in the double digit rounds. Why? Because Jonathan Brooks? Because you think Jonathan Brooks is going to take over the backfield halfway through the season? He's coming in hurt. There's no need to rush him. His rookie season is going to be a red shirt season. He's going to get some playing time, but they're going to ease him into the workload. There's no need to rush him back from his injury. They want to make sure he's healthy for the future. It's not Shuba Hubbard's team in the future, it's Jonathan Brooks. But in 2024, it's Chuba Hubbard's backfield. Chuba Hubbard really wasn't terrible last year, but the Carolina Panthers offensive line got better, which definitely helps his case. PFF ranks them inside the top 20 in 2024. In 2023, they was bottom five. We also have to talk about Dave Canales, the new head coach, who is, in some people's opinions, a quarterback whisperer. So we've seen what he did with Baker Mayfield and Geno Smith. If he can do the same to Bryce Young, this offense is going to be a little bit better, which again, helps Chuba Hubbard. Xavier Leggett. They have Deontay Johnson. Now Adam Thielen no longer needs to be the wide receiver one. He can be a wide receiver three. Like I said, the offense is going to be a lot better this year to have more valuable touches, especially in the red zone. Let's not forget Canales made Rashad White a top three running back in 2023 among touches. He believes in our workhorse system, and he believes in Chuba Hubbard. Like I said, he really didn't have a terrible year last year. He actually ended pretty strong. From weeks 10 to 17, he averaged about 18 attempts, 63 yards on the ground and two targets. So you're talking about averaging 20 opportunities in an eight game stretch. That wasn't an outlier. Now I'm not saying Chuba is going to be, you know, the RB1 or, you know, top five, top 10 even, but he, if you go hero RB or even zero RB, even someone you want to grab and throw into your flex in the later rounds, he's a strong candidate and he can fill in for bye weeks or any injuries that might happen early on in the season. He can be some glue for your fantasy football team. In the 12th round, I want to talk about Joshua Palmer and why he's being underrated as the Chargers' number one wide receiver. He's going off the board as the wide receiver at 57, even after his rookie teammate, Lad McConkey, who's already hurt. Palmer already has the rapport with Justin Herbert. We've seen that last season when they had to go without guys like Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. We've seen the rapport he had with Josh Palmer. You know, everyone's going to assume that this offense is going to be a rush first offense. And again, I do think that myself. But at the same time, I think Justin Herbert has earned the right to be pensing him for at the very least 3,500 yards and 25 touchdowns. Last year, in only 13 games, he had 3,100 yards, 20 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions. And that was a terrible year for Justin Herbert. He should be a lot better this year under new coaching and a new offensive play scheme. Look at the wide receivers on this roster. Ladd McCockey, already hurt, including being a rookie, needs to get acclimated. G.J. Chark, he's never been an alpha on his team. Quentin Johnson, who can't catch. It's silly to think anyone other than Josh Palmer should be the wide receiver one on this team. If you paid attention to Michigan and John Harper last season, you saw that he had a lot of success with the play action. Because they were a rush-first offense, which is what he wants the Chargers to be, what does rushing do? 
open up the pass. Having success with play action was not only something he's going to do at the college level, but he's going to bring that to the Chargers offense. The Chargers was also top five in vacated targets in 2024. You lost your number one receivers, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. You lost Gerald Everett. You lost Austin Eckler. That's your wide receiver one, your wide receiver two, your tight end one, and your running back one. Who's going to catch the ball? Josh Palmer. He is a screaming value in the 12th round. Another player I like in the 12th round is Kirk Cousins. If you're going to punt the quarterback position, you might look at guys like Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff. Look no further than Kirk Cousins, who's playing with some of the best weapons he's ever played for. This coming from the guy who also played with Justin Jefferson. He's been a starter for long enough to know that we can pencil him in for over 4,000 yards and about 30 touchdowns. The torn ACL doesn't scare me because he's never really been a mobile quarterback, but at this age, were we really expecting him to be that mobile? Of course not. So standing in the pocket, getting rid of the ball really quickly is something we can expect of Kirk Cousins. Atlanta's new offensive coordinator, Zach Robinson, has been the offensive coach for the Rams the last few seasons, and we've seen what they've done with that offense. High flying, throwing the ball all over, 11 personnel. Those are some things that Kirk Cousins can exceed at. Something that helps Kirk Cousins be a good quarterback, especially coming off the torn ACL, is having a good offensive line, and Atlanta has just that. They rank top 10 in PFF for offensive line ranks for 2024. He has a handful of young, in their prime athletes and weapons at his disposal, not including Bijan Robinson, Drake London, and Kyle Pitts. And I think I speak for the entire fantasy community in saying that we want to see more from these guys. We want to see these guys get unleashed, and we know that Desmond Ritter was not going to do it, but Kirk Cousins will. Give me Kirk Cousins in the 12th if I'm thinking about a quarterback. And last but not least, let's talk about Taysom Hill the Swiss Army Knight of the NFL. When I say Swiss Army Knife, that's because he literally does a little bit of everything. Sometimes he's a quarterback, sometimes he's a running back. He could be a tight end, he could be a blocker, he could be kick return, especially with this new kickoff rule. He could be a wide receiver. He's gonna be all over the field and he's gonna give you an ample amount of chances to earn fantasy football points. In most platforms, he can still be tight end eligible, which means you could throw him in a flex, regardless if it's a super flex league or not. If he's only eligible for a quarterback, disregard everything I'm saying because I wouldn't want to play him just as a quarterback but the simple fact that I can plug him in my flex is why he's a value. He's going to be good for not only NFL purposes but fantasy purposes also and again if we're talking about free picks he's free as a tight end and most places he goes undrafted. He's someone you can stash at the end of his bench. When you talk about the running back reps Kendrick Miller is getting a bad rep in camp right now. He doesn't have any upside. The coach is even saying it himself. Ivan Kamara is getting up there at age. He's not going to be the workhorse back. Jamal Williams, he's been old. I don't think he has much more left in the tank. So when it comes to the goal line, when it comes to getting explosion out of the backfield, that's where Taysom Hill shines at. When you talk about receiving options, Rashid Shahid has already been hurt. Alvin Kamara was a second leading receiver on this team last year. Michael Thomas is no longer with the team. A.T. Perry, who is he? Who really cares? Taysom Hill is going to be a top three or four target in this offense. And when you talk about tight ends, Jawan Johnson is coming off foot surgery. He's just getting healthy. So they have to work him back slowly. But Taysom Hill can succeed even with Jawan Johnson succeeding at the same time. Last year, Taysom Hill had 400 rush yards, 300 reception yards, and about 40 catches to go along with seven total touchdowns. Taysom Hill finished as a tight end one last year, and he's going to do so again in 2024. He's obviously a boom bust player. Some weeks he might give you 25. Some weeks he might give you two. But that's the chance you take with Taysom Hill. If you load up at all your other positions and give somebody like Taysom Hill a chance in your lineup on the week-to-week -week basis, there's going to be times where he wins you the week. And that's why you should draft Taysom Hill as a sleeper in 2024. Those are my favorite sleepers for 2024. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in and following along with us on this journey to become the number one fantasy football company in the state of Louisiana.